So do we have questions from people for that sort of block of, of speakers? Is there any, uh, anyone with questions? If so, why don't you turn on your, your uh, camera and uh, smile at us. In fact, it'd be good if the speakers who, who are here uh, could, do, could do that uh, so that we can uh, answer any questions or discuss anything there. I've seen a question earlier in the chat uh, asked by Andreas Kainz. Uh, about a GS formula bar, but this was for previous talk. Yes, 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 it was for my talk, yes. So first question was, can we hide toolbars and show them like browsers do? Swipe up, down. So this was really uh, related to the mobile uh, design improvements talk. Yes, so this is a nice idea. I think we have even discussed this <clears throat> internal and even in the community meetings. Uh, that will be nice that in some occasions, on, when you are on mobile, and you are, you know, scrolling uh, through a lengthy document. Maybe some of the things could could be hidden, and then some of the other things could appear again if you swipe back. Yeah, it's like a very common user pattern uh, in the mobile realm. But uh, no one is working on that. Basically, that is a nice idea, <laughs> uh, and it's a nice idea to hack on. Who knows? And the second question is: Is there a is there a plan to use the JS formula bar? Yeah, because Call could get some workflow uh, love. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. <clears> I know. Like, yes. we, so, so yeah, can, he, can he can tell you about it? Oh, oh, well, we have hypothetical plans for JS formula bars. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. <laughs> Unfortunately, like, it is uh, this very complicated thing, uh, just because, uh, like, in the formula bar, you want to show the formatting. Uh, like uh, if you have something in ball, like uh, it, it should be in formula bar in ball, and like it should be preserved. Like when you uh, when you are actually like updating the things in the in this formula bar. In general, like uh, showing that as uh, as in ball, like is not uh, not something like that that would be like crucial for the feature. But still, like maintaining maintaining the formatting. So like if you get into a bold word. Uh, in the formula bar, and like you continue typing, like it should stay bold, like when when, when you are typing that. So um, so like we have some ideas like how to do that, uh, but none of them is trivial. So it is not happening in the near future, I'm afraid. But anyone that wants to get involved in doing that, uh, we have some great design ideas and points to uh, to wrestle with. So yeah, do do you get. Uh... Get involved, yeah. and, and we should be able to hope keep with uh, lots of videos. Oh, uh, Alexandru, can you not see us then, or uh, you? Uh... Hey, life, good to see you. Look at this, fantastic. Um, other questions, I think. Uh, shoot. In meantime, uh, as, as we can see, the pods are up and running, and uh, the default uh, URL we have configured with is this. As you can see, uh, it sounds okay, which means that it is up and running. I can also demonstrate it with the uh, next cloud. Uh, so it is up and running already. And this is a document. Uh, let me just try to add another user there. And you will see it still works. Cool. I think Nicholas was asking if we support Kubernetes, and the answer, of course, is yes. And uh, we have people out there using it, uh, even, which is which as is extraordinary. See, <laughs> as you can see, the, there are different users, and I am editing, and you can see changes in the board. So, collaborator editing feature works too. And by default, uh, Collabora is currently providing two configurations uh, for HA proxy, and another is Nginx, which I introduced this morning. So, <laughs> uh, I think that's it from the my side, and thank you. Thanks so much, Pranam. Really cool. And uh, it's not not uh, not at all easy to make all of these things work. I think if you unshare your screen, Pranam, it's possible we can see more of each other, which would be uh, which would be kind of cool. What with this lonely world of uh, you know horrific COVID lockdownage that, uh, that that we live in. Um, so, cool. Um, or maybe we can't. I mean, what are, how does one play with this? Ah, if you click hide presentation with a little minus at the top, then yes. you, can, you can see bigger people, uh, which, which is cool. Um, 
So yes, Nicholas, we do we do support it, and I think we should probably market it more. You know that we uh, that we do probably. So uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I'm sure Cora is taking notes uh, somewhere in the background, and uh, that's probably one of the things that we should uh, get done. Um, what other questions? Any other questions from people on any of that? Uh, Marco, are you with us, or are you uh, you are uh, you're hiding? Perhaps. I think Marco is a bit busy this morning uh, at exactly this time. For some reason, we shuffled his talk to an unhelpful time. Um, so I think uh, Andreas was asking about the the dark theme uh -huh. for Clubber Online. Ah, yes. Um, I have my third question. Nobody answered. Um, um, dark theme. Uh, do you want to? Do we want to prepare a dark team for Co? Uh, yes. Early, or it's too early. Right. Pedro, what do you think? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, actually, there is already some bits, like for instance, the uh, uh, let's let's talk about the Android shell that uh, already has some work around the dark team but when we are talking about uh, collabora online really so you know the interface around the document uh not yet there was some efforts but still uh i i guess i guess we just have too many things to hack uh before i arrive to that stage uh and we would also i would like to have not only just you know dark dark mode in a way that we just invert everything even if it looks bad <laughs> Uh, we want to have it nicely, and this includes even uh, maybe to uh, maybe even inverting the color of the document itself. You know, because what's the point of having dark mode when the interface is black, and then you have this shining A4 document <laughs> right in your cornea? It's even worse. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. but Go ahead. Having, having said that, the the biggest blocker for this so far uh, was the sidebar, uh, because like it was uh, it was rooted from the from the core. Uh, from LibreOffice, so uh, so that was the biggest blocker. And in uh, like uh, Clubber Online 2021, like uh, we are overcoming this this biggest blocker. Uh, so like it is increasingly possible for the for the inverting the document itself. Uh, like LibreOffice has this functionality, so like uh, it should be possible to insert the document. Uh, sorry, invert the document. Um, the again. Uh, it is not trivial because uh, like uh, this uh, has to be somehow purview. So some of the users like uh, would like to be in the dark mode and some of the users would like to be in the, uh, in the like not, not, not dark mode. But uh, like it could be somehow like incremental that the, first of all, like it would be enabled that, that, that like one uh, that like there would be some server side setting for this, or I don't know, like per, per user or whatever, with this possibility. But for the UI, I think it is increasingly possible. So, uh, so Andreas, is, uh, if you are somehow interested in this, um, talk to Pedro uh, how uh, how to proceed with that. Um, I think in CO twenty twenty one, like it's uh, it's now. Um, very probable or very very probable that we will get some some reasonably good result um in things uh, like writer and impress it will be harder in cult because of the rooted um uh, formula bar again uh and uh, of course with this limitation of the documents uh, like having to be all either dark or uh, or light but not um, so i think so we can fix that bit with as, as we do for the watermarking uh, with an extra bit uh, in that that yes yes demo. yes but like it is some some engineering and some oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. some kind of switching <laughs> inside the the tile rendering yeah. and having to to render each tile twice actually and what the hell like, intersects with theming as well like what well, how, how does what happens in you know if you have a dark mode in your outer frame and you're starting to push colors through how does that how do those two things intersect i don't know <laughs> pedro smiles and nods yes it's it's not entirely clear, but anyway, for, for mobile devices where we have one user and one theme, you know, we should get something really cool, um, which yeah. I guess is the big the big use case of people lying in bed reading their DocX, uh, ODT, you know, whatever, <laughs> at night and not wanting to disturb their spouse or, or whatever it happens to be. So, uh, yeah. Um, 
Yes, cool. We have one more question here from Nikos. <clears throat> so, as the sidebar is uh, JS HTML now, will the other old tuned uh, dialogues follow to get migrated to, to, to that as well? So, I, I think that <laughs> the goal is that wherever is possible and wherever there is more disadvantages than the advantages, yes, I think that's the direction I think Candy can speak about that as well. The best would be if Shimon, uh, Shimon yes. <laughs> speaks about this. So, so but I'm not sure Shimon, if he's here. With us here? Uh, yeah, I think he's not here. Uh, but I, I can just uh, let me see. I will try to ping him. So, so in general, uh, like this is the direction we would like to to have and, and go. Uh, of course, like for the larger dialogues, uh, uh, I think I think the the tapped bar, the double decker tapped bars uh, at the uh, in the dialogues are not implemented yet um, uh, for exactly. the for the dialogues. So I think that is the biggest blocker. Um, but doable in general, like uh, the, these are well did uh, the infrastructure for that is there in the core. Uh, so so it needs to be uh, needs to be just implemented. Yes, and uh, once this is done, it actually will improve a lot because th th those steps, <laughs> once we have that as native, uh, you know, a lot of these reports we sometimes receive from users that, you know, they press a tab and then the whole dialogue shuffles around, yeah, because the order of the tabs change. Even that, suddenly, it's much easier to, to improve. So, yeah, I cannot wait to hear that. Um, and the formula bar? Is there a plan to uh, replace it with JSON? Because on mobile, it it is a bit a showstopper and for Carl. So we talked about that earlier. I think the problem is synchronizing the attributes uh, with the plain text there, and uh, that's something that requires a big chunk of engineering um, to get right. Okay. Um, so one thing, Gokka, I was, I was thrilled by your talk, <clears throat> as you know, and the uh, the canvas pixel crispness uh, work. That's really good. And I was just doing some competitive review yesterday with Office 365 online Microsoft's uh, product. And you'll be pleased to know uh, that if you load a, a doc document on, on their server, um, not only does it render incredibly blurrily, um, but it also renders with false color around the, the things uh, interpolated up as well. So they're, they're clearly rendering it for like a sub pixel clear type and then scaling it. So you see like these horrible fuzzy colors so you know like uh we're, we're, we're really kicking some backside there i think that's uh that's uh, compared to the competition thank you thank you for uh telling sharing this information <laughs> we worked a lot and thank you uh also john uh it was incredible and it was fun of course uh, at the same time well i'm glad you liked it great great result um what else oh gabriel there's a kubernetes question uh, for Pranav, it says, how are the documents yes. distributed between pods and how does it work in practice? Uh, so basically, the uh, it doesn't matter how many documents, if, if it is the same document, uh, we it has to go into the same pod, otherwise we, uh, the default configuration is rely on the cloud provider's load balancing and we do not provide any additional uh, load balancing apart from that based on the OPSRC parameter. Uh, OK. Uh, so I, I think we discussed at some point this at cool meetings, but I was just uh, wondering if there are any news. So from what I remember, uh, uh, the distribution is made on OPSRC. Uh, hash is uh, uh, generated from uh, OPSRC, and then based on that hash, a pod is uh, chosen so uh, uh, of course it did uh, here uh, it could be possible uh, that some issues will arise uh, so for example all the pods will be distributed to the same all the documents will be dis distributed to the same board so i was uh, curious in practice uh, uh, the hash that you are using is working well uh, how the distribution is. I mean, uh, did you encounter it, uh, cases like uh, uh, one pod has, I don't know, too many documents assigned uh, in comparison with the other pods or something like that? Uh, 
so maybe let me answer that question, Gabriel. So yeah. we didn't we didn't do uh, any kind of like uh, real stress testing uh, uh, of this. Uh, so it was that we uh, we came up with the setup and gave it to the customers that are using Kubernetes and they didn't complain. So uh, the assumption is that uh, that uh, that it works well, uh, but uh, like we didn't do the, the stress testing ourselves uh, to the level uh, that we would be able to tell you tell you like yeah it absolutely like rocks and, and distributes perfectly. Uh, that's uh, something we cannot like, we cannot tell you at, the, at this very moment. And of course, it's 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 based on a hash of the WAPI source, which comes from the integration. So if the integration wants to do a hash attack. Or on the uh, on the pod distribution uh, algorithm, then no doubt it can. But that seems like quite a self-defeating approach, you know. I don't know. So, so ha have a reasonably sensible WAPI source. Um, okay. Yeah, that that's one thing. And the the other thing, uh, Gabriel, when we were talking um, like the last time about the details for this, so so there is the setting, uh, and I do not recall it off the top of my head. Uh, that that actually. Uh, like uh, tells uh, tells uh, the ingress uh, to uh, to keep the hashes stable for those that were already assigned. So mm -hmm. uh, I do not recall. Uh, Pranam will recall the, the name of this thing, right? Uh, uh, there was this setting that uh, that that made this uh, hash stable for the like when when you add more pods uh, that like okay yeah like it is distributed to more stuff but like what was created so far it still goes to the to the old ones uh, but i don't do not recall the name of the of this setting there mm -hmm. yeah. so it sounds like ralph has some experience here ralph do you want to do you want to tell us you, you say it's it's going well for you the kubernetes uh, distribution uh, do you want to talk or, or share your video or i don't know that sounds encouraging Ralph? No? Ah, life you're is typing instead. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. Uh, it needs a couple of key presses. Yeah, the dis distribution is okay, but it's far from being equal. Um, so far, I would say, yeah, it's... I don't see how we can make it better apart from really using a different hash and doing that completely in the integration and keeping track how many people are already on which document. Um, that would be the only thing and basically create an artificial hash for the distribution. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, okay, so uh, yeah, well, there are solutions. So for example, we are using a proxy for this and we ensure programmatically that uh, there is a uh, there is a, a well a distribution between the ports, but in this case you need a proxy, a custom proxy. So I think one of the things we're interested in from a roadmap perspective is getting that feedback on on how well that's going or not, and then you know obviously you know it makes sense for us to produce a, a balancing a proxy that will work out not just how many docu you know, how many documents but how many users and and what load is on those machines. And then maybe even give hints for, for scaling out and up, and up and down and so on. Um, so yeah, that, that's certainly something that's in the back of my mind on the roadmap. And uh, you know, if, if customers are having grief with that, then let us know. And, uh, yeah, so we use a proxy, and the proxy also runs a script before it sends someone actually on the Collabora cluster, so that we can monitor. Um, how many documents a customer opens, and also to be able to report back to Collabora how many uh, users each domain uh, has. And obviously, that could also be used um, to do a more clever approach with the hash. Mm -hmm. But as a, we, we are currently not using it, but we only have um, at the moment three pods in use, and they are. As I said, um, sometimes one pod has like double the load of the other ones, but it is still okay. So I haven't spent any time and effort to, to improve it. So Ralph, no. that script sounds really, really interesting. And if you could just share your configuration on the forum, I think that would be interesting to lots of people generally. So uh, if, if that's easy to do, you know, you're, yeah, you're, it's you're, a basically, you're proxy. Um, I just, when uh, Collabora opens the document that url goes to a little php script the php script 
basically looks at the whoopee source and ecoware itself also sends an extra parameter which is not in the collabora protocol okay. which uh, denominates the user who is using the document mm -hmm. and that gets recorded in a database and based on that uh, i just proxy the original document through the php script and from that on basically my php script is out of the whole equation and everything goes directly to the engines proxy yeah that, that'd be wonderful but if, if there is some small cut down example or something you could put on the forum i think that'd be really useful for other people and for us to see as yeah well. i can it, do but, that i mean i also have i think i shared it in one of the tickets i opened i have now a, a way that i'm able out of our monitoring to go to the different admin screens Oh, cool. because that's also very helpful for troubleshooting mm -hmm. uh, because you have the customers reporting uh, this document doesn't open anymore but then you have some trouble <laughs> which, which of the which pods server? is actually serving the document yeah, yeah, yeah. and now we are at least able to then select the pods see that document and go to the admin screen of that pod and can cancel it or can see the pot has a problem and um yeah kill the pot uh so so regarding the idea of having a proxy uh, uh there is another advantage um, you can uh, not only spread evenly uh, the uh, documents between ports but you can uh, take into account also the um uh, resources usage this is something that uh, we don't have yet but we have in mind to do it at some point to take into account for, for example there could be only two documents on a on a pod which you can consume almost 100 percent of resources and on the other pod uh, you can have uh, 10 uh, documents which you can uh, use only half of the resources so in order to take advantage of these differences okay not only to spread evenly but uh, to spread based on resources i think uh, it's uh, it will be a, a good idea to have this definitely, definitely. And i think yeah, it's basically like the kubernetes scheduler when a new document arrives you can just select the pod which has the uh, least of the load and the uh, most of the resources available and schedule it there i mean yeah. it might not help perfectly because it could happen that a hundred other users want to join that document mm. but yeah as we, we could do a much better in that regard yeah yeah definitely that's all for all sorts of amazing things are possible i mean like we, we could shut the document you know and migrate it almost transparently to another node if, if you know like in theory there's no real reason why you can't dynamically rebalance the document if almost transparently i mean not not fully transparent but uh, you know, yeah, if you stop typing for too long you may find yourself rebalanced to another load and never notice but uh, yeah. let's see let's see but i think there is still one small problem when kubernetes shuts down one of the collabora nodes at the moment it seems not to release the logs and that's a problem because Which locks ralph um the whoopee locks oh. That's interesting. As I mean, Kubernetes the the sends a signal, and so <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. you would have the chance to uh, remove the whoopee lock. But it, as a, I haven't really an example to reproduce it, but I can see that it's one way that the lock, as a, we were investigating in another problem with the whoopee locks. Mm -hmm. And one way uh, you can easily reproduce it is if you kill one of the pods um then the lock stays right yes i mean this is this is a lease effectively that we we renew the, with the WAPI protocol so you know you Never have to renew the customer, it means he has to wait half an hour till yeah 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 that's us that's us yeah no, don't disagree with that yeah <laughs> but i think if it's a lease based uh, thing and you you hard kill the guy who holds the lease then that's pretty hard i mean if it's if it's a clean shutdown then we can do something uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was talking about clean shutdowns. If it, okay. if the pot crashes, obviously there is very little we can do. <laughs> but uh, if Kubernetes basically sells, yeah. sends a kill signal, um, Collabora cleanly shuts down, then it could also um, 
Really it should release problem. the Whoppy locks, no doubt about it. Yeah, so so we should uh, look into that. If you, if you file a bug, we, you know, we can look at it. Yeah. Good. Uh, cool. What else? Other other thoughts or questions? People. I was particularly pleased to see Shinji here from Japan. So hi, Japan. You know, and uh, yeah, great, great to have you. I guess it's very late at night. So uh, thank you for. Uh, oh, and Quickie, of course. Why she? I think maybe Quickie is back in Slovenia. So. Uh, Good to have you here. Anyone else want to speak up, say something, type something? No? Ah. <laughs> cool. cool. So it, it sounds to me like there's more we can do on Kubernetes to uh, to improve that. I think it, it's great uh, to hear about this HA proxy. Uh, sorry, the Nginx work that my pronoun's just been doing. So that's, that's cool too. Um, yeah, probably see the Cypress, Cypress testing uh, going on as well, uh, and it's it's really nice to know that, that <clears throat> you know this burns away behind the scenes. Every commit we do, we're running all these tests uh, to uh, exercise all that mobile goodness. And uh, thanks to Rash for uh, maintaining that, and of course Unisimray keeping the CI system working, um, which is which is all good behind the scenes. Um, yeah, and it really goes a lot quicker if you turn off the delays that the uh, and, uh, are, are in there so that the user can see what's going on when they're trying to debug a problem, which is fun. And anything else? Other thoughts or questions? Yes. Good. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the eGroupware stuff later from, from Ralph. I think you're doing a, a demo there, and uh, Gabriel's a one on one uh, bits. I think and Alexandru hopefully will. Uh, and something there. Um, it's slightly early, four minutes early for our next talk. So we can, you know, do like a, you know, I don't know, get Mr. Motivator here to, uh, I don't know, do some exercises or something. Well, we can have a break. Why don't we have a, a quick uh, comfort break and then we'll be back in three minutes. How about that? Make sense? Thanks, everyone. Thanks. See you in a, See you in a bit.